Hey y'all, welcome back to The Range. I'm Jared Paul, and today we're keeping it inside, even though it's a beautiful day outside, because most of my outdoor work is done for the year. Just gonna make sure everything stays hydrated and then protected for winter. Uh, but all pruning, repotting, that's all done. So um, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a look at all of my mamai bonsai, or mame. Um, so that is the smallest version of a bonsai tree and it should never be taller than about five centimeters. So a little less than two inches because there's 2.54 centimeters in an inch for those of you like me in the United States of America. So uh, with that being said, it's all about those tiny trees today and that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. So I'm surrounded by the majority of my tiny trees. Um, and one thing that's really important if you are going to get into Mame Bonsai, um, I'm no expert by any means, this is their, all their first years of life, is that you have each day to check on them because if you're not misting them in the summer just to make sure that they, they stay moist, um, you're watering them. So a nice technique that I have found that now that it's fall allows me a couple of days before I have to do anything with them is you put them in a little deeper uh, drip tray and just fill it that way so that the water is absorbed through the roots through time and that helps keep them a little wetter because with these smaller pots it's hard to water gently enough to not force the soil out of the top which is frustrating and then it's such a tiny tree with shallow roots that it'll shift um, but yeah that's pretty much it so if you, if you put it in like a little bath of water to sit in uh, it'll absorbed from the bottom and I've found I've had a lot more success with that. Also, um, in the drip tray, I put these little pellets. These are Osmocote Plus time release capsules. Um, so every time I water them, they're getting a little bit of extra nutrients. So those are a couple of tricks I've learned. Um, I'm going to, I was gonna transplant these pencil cuttings, pencil cactus cuttings, because they're just growing like so vertically and tall, they keep like knocking the pots over, but I don't want to quit yet. So I'm going to chop them down today and hopefully they'll thicken up. The roots will start to hold them in place better and it'll be a more functional mame bonsai. Um, okay, so over here, these are from a little succulent tree that I have. Uh, and that one is actually in a, a relatively small pot as well. But these are all cuttings and I really like this species. I'll get you a little close up later because they get aerial roots and uh, they've just, it, it's almost, it's similar to a jade, but a little bit different. Actually, as they're growing in right now, it looks like a little dwarf jade, but the, the, the mama plant, if you want to call it that, has more tubular, uh, you know, nodes going on. So I don't know if that will actually happen now that these have a restricted root base or not. But. And then I've got this one. This is from a cutting from my buddy Scott Winard at Let's Do Bonsai. He sent me a jade plant, and um, Laura, Franny, and I, we potted these up. That one seems to be settling in nicely. Important when you uh, do cuttings of succulents that you don't water them that much. They really don't need that much water. water. Maybe uh, mist them a couple of times a week. And then I have a couple of failures I wanted to show because... If you're gonna get into bonsai, like even the best, we don't show all of our failures. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna do a video on how I did a terrible job, you know? But it is, it is all part of the learning process and just part of it. Some trees, they just won't make it. So this was a um, key lime citrus tree, just dried up and died, did not like the little pot, or I just did a poor job transplanting it. And this one, I want to say, I don't remember. Oh, it was, this was the uh, American Arbor Vitae that I had grown from seed. And it was looking rough to begin with. So I went for it, but it just didn't make it. So those are two failures. Uh, and a little bit larger of a pot. I absolutely love this one. I got this from a, uh, a nursery on my birthday. A nice little bonsai nursery. And it's got a built-in drip tray. It's got a really cool green color. And uh, this has a pineapple guava that I grew from seed. And at the base, I'll, I'll give you a close up later, it split immediately. 
And then I've actually gotten it to divide a couple of times, and then that divides the divide a couple of times on both sides, which is your objective. So for a young tree, this has a lot of character, and I love the pot. This is this is top top ten favorite, and out of you know maybe three three to thirty five hundred trees, three thousand to thirty five hundred. You know that's pretty good, <laughs> being that it's in my top ten. This is the not so pretty one. So it's actually, this is like the most ghetto tree in my house. So this is an old ashtray from a thrift store that I drilled holes in to make a pot out of it. And this is another pineapple guava that I grew from seed, but it grew up, boom, pruned it. It split, this side died, this side didn't. And then that split again. And then it's just grown <laughs> long and leggy and these trees, I, I have a ton of them. I even have a forest planting of them. Uh, they do not thicken up quickly at all. We're looking at almost three years on this guy. And it's it's a tiny little twig. But I do love when they do come in, when they first start to uh, leaf out, they have these really attractive elliptical light green leaves. And it's just really nice. Um, they do get a little long and stringy, so you feel like you have to prune them back, which I do. But when you prune something back, obviously it takes some of the energy out of the tree so the trunk won't thicken as quickly. So it's kind of like a catch-22. Do you want it to look really nice year-round or do you want to just let it grow out fugly as hell, thicken up, and then prune it back one time? I've chosen the other route to do like a three-time-a-year pruning. So we'll get this one back into the correct size. And then over here, this is my uh, mame grouping of three that are different trees. So this is a Pinus strobus which is a weeping white pine. And I grew that from seed from a little pine cone that a client of mine uh, actually took from somebody's yard when we were doing uh, an exercise walk. And, and so I took that pine cone. I, I actually got like uh, six to seven of these trees and I have them in various plantings around. So right now it's kind of tall and skinny for this tiny little pot, but I'm apprehensive to do any pruning to it because it needs to like gain strength as a tree itself. You know, pines grow uh, very slowly, but then they'll start to branch out on their own. And that's when you do the work to them. That's when you decide, okay, I'll keep these branches. I'll bring down the apex, the whole nine. So right now this guy is at, well, we'll do it to there. It's at three and a half inches. So three and a half times 2.5, you're looking at six, seven, and one and a half. So you're looking at about eight and a half centimeters here. So we're about 3.5 centimeters too tall, but it's just not time to prune it. Over here, I thought this was a Korean birch at first, um, but it turned out to be a Rose of Sharon. So this is a cutting from my initial Rose of Sharon that I grew um, from seed. And it had died off here, but we had a healthy node which came in. So today I will take off that and leave a little bit of room for dieback, even though I think the whole branch is actually dead. And that's that's really looking, looking good. I think it's gonna do well. These flower with purple, white, or pink flowers. So I'm looking forward to, I think this one specifically will do uh, purple, um, but I'm looking forward to next spring, seeing a little flower on a tiny little pot. That'll be cool. And lastly, but not least, this is a cactus that I grew from seed from the Sonoma National Forest or National Park in Arizona. A client went out there, uh, she was doing like a remembrance tour from when she was in uh, going for a PhD. And so when she was uh, going for a PhD, she was at Arizona State and just uh, loving life, traveling all over the place. And uh, so when she went out there with her family, she decided to bring me back some seeds from the place that she loved so much from all these years. And so that one's pretty special to me because I think it's about two years old and you see the thing's only about an inch tall. So that's pretty cool. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'll probably start first with pruning these up because I had to, if you could see, put all three pots leaning together because they won't even stand up anymore because they've gotten so tall and leggy. So. 
So let's get to pruning that. Verse attempt. Uh, pruning bonsai lefty I got a couple more weeks with this on at least and uh, you know I was having Laura and Franny help me with everything but to be honest I miss it I miss doing it myself so these aren't that serious and they should be manageable even with one hand one hand and three fingers <laughs> so you see I had left it about that tall and it branched out to three. That's why I liked it as a cutting to try for a mame. But instead of me getting a little branching down here, it just decided to grow strictly from the apex and then split up top. So any of the new growth, I wouldn't want at all. Even, I mean, this, the top of this is a little too tall. So I was planning on bringing it back. These things are funny. You know, you, you could prune them off and then that branch dies and nothing grows out of the uh, inner node where that branch is coming from. Or you could prune it and all of a sudden you have uh, four branches coming from one point. So the pencil cactus is fun. It's very easy to root as a cutting. You could do it in water or in soil. Very easy. Trust me, pick up one pencil cactus and in five years you'll have 500 if you want them. I mean, look behind me. That's the mama. That came in a pot about just about twice the size of this. I paid three dollars thirty three cents, and it was it was just a couple of trunks, not much taller than that. And now here we are. I started in twenty eighteen, and here we are. This thing is ginormous, growing out of pots, getting repotted, and I have all these cuttings. So, yeah. All right. I think I'm just going to take the whole thing off, even below where it branches, because when it branches, then it'll make it too top heavy. I want it to actually come out of here and get new branches from the base and then let this thicken up and get woody. So I'm going to. Okay, important to know with these, maybe the, not the babies so much, but the adult plants, they have this white residue that comes out that's supposed to be poisonous for predators, but also you shouldn't put it to touch your eyes or anything. You could you can get poisoned by it and uh, orally, or you could get blinded um, by touching your eyes. So very, very important when dealing with these. That's my full disclaimer. They're easy to grow, but deadly. So it actually looks pretty cool. It looks like a little cactus in the desert without the spikes. That's one. I'm gonna have to clean this drip tray up. I used this uh, soil mix. It was a bonsai compound from the bonsai supply, which I've only ordered from them once through Amazon. But as far as bonsai soil goes, it was very reasonable, very economical. And in my opinion, it, it, was, a, it was a high quality mix, you know, a mixture of medium to very small uh, stones and rocks and it's pretty cool. It's also attractive. You have three or four different colors, you know, popping at the bottom of your planting. I like that. All right, so this one actually spread out very nicely. It probably would stay balanced on its own, but it keeps bumping into everything else. But even though, oh, <laughs> see? These tall skinny pots, I prefer these short squatty ones way more. They came in a pack of 20 from Amazon, I believe. So this is 2.5 inches. So we're about uh, 1.26 centimeters too tall. I do not want to cut into the main trunk and and just leave that because I'm not confident that it will butt out from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dramatically shorten these and hope for a bud back. <sighs> yeah. I don't recommend these. <laughs> They've been very frustrating.
Okay. Two down, one to go. So this one I like because it was crawling out of the pot. You know, it was attractive. And once again, just grew from the ends, no bud back. So I'm going to trim it back here, here, boom, boom. It's sturdy in there though. So good root growth. And dispose of these. The last time I did a pencil cactus video, there was somebody that left a, a comment like, when you do, and it will happen, you'll be blinded, and blah, and blah, and it was like so negative. I'm like, okay, dude, like I, I know enough not to touch my eyeball after cutting up a hot pepper, let alone a freaking poisonous cactus. So, anyways, I blocked him. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I like constructive criticism and help on my channel, but anybody who's negative, I'm like, dude, I do this for enjoyment and fun and to relax. So, like, I'm not looking for an argument online. It's the last thing I want to do. Life's too short, you know? Oh, thought that was my cider. <laughs> All right. So, this drip tray is just full of like little bits of their soil. Because like I said, it's very difficult to water them and they kept falling over. So I will, uh, I'll clean that up momentarily. I don't want to get over to this Rosa Sharon and prune it while we're pruning stuff. You, you see what I'm saying? That wasn't much movement. It's a short tree and that's the only one that fell over. So if you're going for Mame, go for these little squatty pots and not the tall skinny ones that look like shot glasses. All right. Do this. Boom. I've been waiting six to nine months to prune this part off just because I was holding my breath that this was actually gonna grow back and it did. Boom. So these are little babies that I don't, you know, I wouldn't enter these into shows in any way, nor do I have trees that I would enter into a show yet. But if you're just joining the channel, I've been going at this. This is working on my third year. So I would consider myself like a level three bonsai guy. It takes a long time. Um, but if I can make any recommendation, what's been most rewarding for me is growing your trees from seed, taking your time and it's like thinking about it like, okay, this isn't a hobby that I'm going to do for a couple of years. I'm not going to take someone else's tree that's 20 years old, all their hard work, and then like mess it up or like claim, oh, look, I do bonsai. You know, if you're going to do bonsai, create your own bonsai. So I'm going to bring this back, not as short as I should. Even to the first divide, we're looking at three and a half inches again. So this is going to need some serious bud back to be considered a mame, but I have hope for it. It's now positioned on my fancy new bonsai display shelf. Laura redid this old bookshelf for me and like used this oil wax so that when I water and I spill, like it just beads up. It doesn't ruin the wood. And it's in a great spot and it looks awesome. So, oh, see, I have some, I got some action going on here. I think these are mealy bugs. I just treated with systemic granules, but I might have missed this one. So, I'm going to add some of that when I put it back. Okay. So, I'm going to prune it back to like, the first or second set of leaves. Boom, boom. Oh yeah, this one's all, when you, when your plant's struggling and you can't necessarily see bugs, but your leaves are getting like shiny and sticky, there's something going on. It might, it might be bugs in your soil or just they're so small you can't see them but definitely something's going on and that's what's going on here. The tips of these nice bright green leaves are browning up. So that's what made me think there was an issue. 
It's at the bottom shelf of my little uh, bonsai display case. So I'm not necessarily getting on all fours and looking up under these leaves all the time. And that is a problem, yeah. Yeah, this one has bugs. So that's probably why our second branch didn't get any leaves or anything. So I'm gonna treat this before I put it back with some granules and then a combination of uh, liquid dish soap, all natural liquid dish soap and neem oil. So anything above the surface should get treated and then anything below the surface should be taken care of too for at least eight weeks. Okay, that's disappointing actually. I'll put this one front and center. I'm going to bring you all in for a little close up and uh, that's going to do it for today's episode. I think this one's going to be cool. It split early on and then divided again early on. So I, I like that as a cutting. This is that succulent I was telling you about. You can see those little white hairs coming off of it. And then the older ones are a little uh, red and brown. So those are aerial roots. So if those touch down are a little mame, I think that would be incredible. Once again, this is not a jade. It's not this. Something different. And I can't remember the name. These are the fugly little cuttings we just took care of. I believe they'll end up doing well because the root the roots actually attach nicely. So that was good to see. So now we could probably develop uh, some sort of ramification down, down lower with some bud back. Usually strong roots allows even the smallest tree to grow muscularly. And this one I'm not touching today and there was no bug activity, but you could see early on split trunk and then another split trunk. It just has an attractive flow to it in my opinion. Little sea turtle in there. This is the sickly one. I think that's a dog hair hanging off there. But it had some like white mealy bugs. And you'll usually get your bugs, whether they're aphids, scale insects, or uh, mealy bugs, you'll get them. Also, uh, spider mites, you'll get them right in the crotch of branches. You know, right in the, the new growth, right where it's coming out, right in the nodes. So you got to really get close with your eyes. There's the Pinus strobus on the right. Rose of Sharon centered. And the cactus on the left there. All right, y'all. So that's going to do it for today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, mame tutorial. You're learning along with me. Uh, leave your comments below. Really always enjoy those. If you have any questions or um, some advice to give, I'm down with that. Please like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you soon from the ranch. Cheers.